Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Beat the Bell. It's a brand new week. Excited. Lots of opportunity to come. Hopefully, everybody had a phenomenal weekend. We are pumped to be back for a full week of Beat the Bell. A couple things. First, go check out the Kane Capital YouTube if you haven't. Over the weekend, we dropped two new videos. First video was Mo's uh, weekly recap where he went through every single trade that he took, explaining why he entered, why he exited, how he managed his trade. He had another great week, so you guys will love to see that video. I also dropped part three of my tutorial series on the system where I talk about key trading principles. Another good one there. Now, let's introduce the panel, starting with Money Mander. Mander, good morning. Good morning, team. Happy Monday. Almost March already. Pretty crazy. Pretty crazy this year is flying by. Absolutely, man. It is going by quickly. All right. Diamond Trades. What's going on, guys? Hope everybody had a great weekend. Like Mander said, um, closing out February here in the next couple of days. So I'm going to close out strong. I'm excited for March to get going. Ramsey Rippers. What is going on, guys? Good morning. Uh, yep. Going to be a good day today. Indices ripping a little right now. I believe that we had some home sales data drop at 830. So um, I haven't checked out that data yet. But uh, yeah, Spice Spice to kind of moving pie right now. We're ripping. The futures are up about 25. It's going to be an interesting trading day. Let's jump right into our Fed forecast and economic calendar for the week. What do we got, gentlemen? Yep, let's go ahead and get started with the economic calendar. We'll kick it off there. Um, so this week is going to be pretty light as far as news goes. Paxson just mentioned that we had that durable goods order that came in um, on a month-over-month -month basis, 4.5%. That literally just came in um, seven minutes ago. Durable goods, 4.5% um, decrease versus a 4% decrease expected. Um, so a bit more weakness there in durable goods. And we'll touch on why the markets may be rallying on that um, just in a little bit. But we do have pending home sales a little bit later today at 10 o'clock, um, a Fed speaker as well. Um, really, I think the two highlights of this week are going to be that case shiller home prices um, index that comes out tomorrow. We've talked about um, you know, how the, the housing market has been a little bit rocky, particularly since the start of this year um, with the Fed raising their rates and having that terminal rate be so high, mortgage rates be so high. Um, we want to see how the, how the housing market is going to react to that. So those um, the case shiller numbers on Thursday. And then additionally, on um, that's on Tuesday, I'm sorry. And then on Thursday, we have the initial jobless claims for the week, um, closely, as always, monitoring the job market, the labor market, um, as that tight labor market is expected to be really one of the primary pressures on inflation going forward. So we're going to have to make sure that we pay attention to that. Um, but back to that durable goods. The durable goods came in at 4.5%. Um, versus 4%, a 4% decrease expected. Um, Paxton mentioned that the market is rallying a little bit on that news. And I think it's a bit welcome to see signs that the economy may not be quite as hot as we thought. Um, I think that any of those signs that we see going forward, as long as they're not too, too bad, are going to be welcome and may be met um, with a little bit of a rally. As that sort of infers um, that the, the the Federal Reserve is not going to be able to be as hard um, in terms of financial conditions going forward when the economy is not in a great place. So I think that anything that sort of confirms that idea might lead to short term bounces in the market. Um, but obviously, on a longer term scale, those things are generally not good. Right. You don't want to see durable goods um, orders decreasing. You don't want to see um housing housing uh, sales decreasing right these are things that normally you don't want to see happening but in the in the inverted situation that we're in right now i think that um some of those data points could lead to uh short rallies in the market fantastic couldn't have said that any better and continued housekeeping for the week let's check on the earnings calendar what we have coming up this week the two names that i'm mostly watching this week will be hp and dell but some other notable ones we have oxy Zoom, um, AMC for the apes, Target, and a bunch of retailers this week. We have Target, Lowe's, Best Buy, Costco, um, Salesforce, and Snow for some cloud computing data. So the two I'm really going to be watching are going to be HP and Dell, I think, out of all these names, mostly because where I was looking for these earnings to be projected. Both of them right about minus 5, minus 4.5% quarter over quarter on revenues, and then Dell significantly worse quarter over quarter on EPS and profitability at about minus 29%. Um, expected with HP about minus 13% quarter over quarter. To me, though, with those revenue numbers, if you guys remember going back to Microsoft's earnings, 
They stated in the recent earnings report that they saw personal computing revenues down 19% for the entire sector, including Xbox, gaming, all of that stuff. But Windows licenses, which goes really hand in hand with the hardware sales of HP and Dell with their computers, was down 39% in the quarter. So for me, I'm really watching these two names to see how HP, how Dell report, because I'm not quite sure what else their really main um, revenue is going to be besides the hardware sales. I'm sure they do others in some type of cloud space, some type of software, but hardware sales have really, in my opinion, been their biggest driver. And after Microsoft just saw Windows licenses and sales down for operating systems, 39%, that's really ones I'm watching going into this week. Um, Noah, what are you watching here? Um, For me, there's quite a few retailers that we have this week um, between Lowe's and Target and some of those other names. Target is definitely going to be my top watch. They report uh, tomorrow morning. We got that retail sales number in um, January. So, or I'm sorry, for February in January for in, in February for January. I'm sorry. Still have a sleep over here. Um, that number is going to be important for target because um, target is expected to have a pretty weak earnings report this year. So listen to this. Their uh, analysts are expecting their net income to come in for the fourth quarter of 2022, expecting that net income to come in around $650 million, according to fact set. That's a 57% drop um, from the same quarter in 2021, where they did about $1.54 billion in um, earnings. The revenue is expected to, to drop from about 1.1 percent from the uh, from the year prior, and the net income is expected to drop uh, drastically as we just talked about that 57 percent. That's really due to an increase or a decrease rather in their operating margins. Right, you have a situation where they're bringing in a little bit less revenue, and their costs are um, are going up. Right, with the um, supply chain constraints that, that they saw a little bit in 2022, those those are now easing, obviously. But I think. Those combination of pressures really put um, quite a bit of strain on Target's margins. I think that that's something that people are going to be looking out for going into this earnings and maybe some guidance on if that's expected to continue into 2023 as some of the input prices do come down um, a little bit. So we'll have to see um, what Target reports and particularly their guidance. Target is really one of the largest retailers in the country. And I think... Um, you know, getting some insight from them on what they're seeing going forward here throughout 2023 is going to be very important um, and probably very relevant to all of those other uh, retail companies. Yeah, I think that's right in line with a lot of other companies, too, and that revenues aren't getting as hit maybe as drastically as some people would expect, given the rate hikes. But the profitability margins are really where we're seeing a big downturn in a lot of these names. Moving forward in here, let me give a quick update on the debt markets, of course. Um, After PCE came in spicy hot last Friday, we actually had another repricing in the federal funds futures right now, where going back to just two weeks, the last time I showed this, we had 500 to 525 being the the probability favorite right now, going at about 36%, I believe it was, just two weeks ago. After PCE just came in hot on Friday, the favorite now is no pivot, being priced in in Fed futures. So 525 to 550 after three more 25 basis point hikes is now leading with a 38% probability. Had to cover that in for you. And then moving forward here, the last thing I wanted to update was the divergence between the stock and the bond market. So I have an overlay of SPX and TLT year to date. If you guys remember going back to the start of February, we were really harping on how the stock market was outperforming the bond market significantly with a massive divergence going into the month after bonds started to sell and yields rose after the FOMC meeting, stocks didn't quite move in parity. Now only outperforming 2% here in the S&P 500 index versus the TLT long-term bond ETF here. So that's one thing I'll definitely be watching moving forward. This is a year to date. And so I think now really with the two-year going into fresh 16-year highs, you have the 10-year looking to get back above 4%. As we look at this divergence here, I'm thinking the next stop realistically might be the year-to-date open. So what are you watching there, Diamond? Um, Look, I... I'm very interested to see if, in fact, we have put in the top uh, for the year. I mean, that's how things are looking right now with just with the with the way that things are trading outside of the stock market with the dollar um, absolutely ripping, as you said, the two year hitting 16 year highs, um, that 10 years creeping up towards that 4% level. Um, I think that when you have this sort of confluence uh, outside of the stock market, you have to really take it seriously. It's definitely not one of those things where, oh, the perma bears are being perma bears. Like that's um that's where the smart money plays. And 
you know, they're not wrong often. So I, I think, you know, you have to seriously, seriously consider the possibility um, that at least the first half of the year, the high for at least the first half of the year has been put in um, at the beginning of February there. But I guess we'll have to see. We will wait and see. That purple line was SPX still outperforming TLT by about 2% here. TLT pretty much flat on the year now after after the rally we saw in January. So that'll wrap us up here. Back to you, Alejandro. All right, let's jump into the system. So as we were mentioning a little bit earlier, the market is doing well here in the pre-market. We are currently up about 30 points in the S&P futures. So that is going to be interesting for me because we closed about 25 points below the 50th man, the 30-minute chart last Friday. So the market gave its first attempt at breaking over the 50 SMA, but it was in a strong downtrend and was unable to do so. We, of course, got the sell signal a couple weeks ago, and the market has been in a steady, steady downtrend. Now, we may get the buy signal for the first time in, again, a couple weeks on the break over the 50 SMA. So that is something that I will definitely be watching for today and taking a look at the hourly chart. The 50 SMA is still on a strong downtrend up at 4040. Now, if you watched the video that I made last night or that I released last night, I talked about determining risk versus reward when entering a trade, looking at the two time frames using the system. So Let's say the market opens up at 4020 SPX, okay? And the 50 SMA on the one hour chart is at 4040. Measure your risk versus reward. You have a potential reward of 20 points if everything goes well up to that 50 SMA on the one hour chart. That means that in order to have a strong risk versus reward, something greater than, let's say, a one to one, you want uh, to make sure that that reward. Uh, the 20 point reward is greater than the risk you're taking on. And typically, you know, I'll use a 10 to 15 point risk. It depends on your trading style, trading strategy. It also depends largely on the areas on the chart, uh, your levels that you have drawn out. But basically what I'm trying to say here is that we might get the break over the 50th of May on the 30 minute chart. OK, because it's a little bit lower. It's at 39.89. OK. So up to the 50th minute of the one hour chart, it does look like you have about 30 points. That to me makes sense, right? You risk 10 points for a potential 30 point reward. You could take half off, take whatever you want off, take profits at the hourly 50 SMA. And then you hope to see that continuation through what we know is a strong resistance level coming down. So I, I do think that there will be an opportunity for a trade there. Again, we want to see how the market opens. There's still some time until the cash open. Don't want to jump the gun, but things certainly look strong. And the futures have been in a pretty strong uptrend um, since the Sunday night open. Okay. Now let's pass it to Ramsey Rippers for Bet the Bell. For the system, I'm going to pass it over now to Ramsey Rippers for Bet the Bell. Good morning. Good morning, guys. All right, team. Thank you, Alejandro, for passing it to Ramsey Rippers for Bet the Bell. We're going to get into it shortly. The indices, as uh, Noah and Mander stated, are ripping right now. Spy about to test 400. Initial rejection. Take a look at the stats. Nothing's changed too much. The guys are performing well. Uh, Mo Mamba, glad to have you this morning. Struggling yet again in last place, but he's not struggling trading. Struggling this morning. Hey, I'm struggling this morning too, man. Struggling this morning, overslept my alarm, but let's get let's get it, man. Let's have a great week, fuck it. But not struggling in the market. You guys got to check out that uh, daily re or the weekly recap that was just posted on YouTube this week for Mo Mamba. Now let's get right into it. Looks like Spy's about to crack 400. Green or red today? Still up less than a percent. What do we got, Alejandro? Green day, baby. The Bulls are back. I know you love to see that. Uh, Diamond. I'm going to go green as well. I agree with Alejandro. Has anybody been noticing that Diamond's just been tailing me since he knows I'm better than him at this? Stop it. Has anybody, even, has anybody noticed that? Every time. I mean, I can't get him off me. He's like hair on a gorilla. All right. Uh, Ramsey on Wednesday put me first in the rotation. Gotcha. You will be first on Wednesday. And I'll put you first on Friday as well. Mander. 
I really – I'm trying to fade Diamond here as much as possible to, like, find back up this leaderboard, but I have to take green, too. I think we're due for an oversold bounce here. And Mambo. Green, baby. Green, green. We're swinging calls, man. Got to go green. There you go. Yeah, I mean, as Mo stated last week, we kind of got that uh, supply – actually, demand zone bounce on the daily. Looks like a possible – if we keep uh, trending higher, a possible false breakout of that trend line on SPY. Um on the daily chart. So let's go into our next question of the day. Ryan, please pull up that Amazon chart. Uh, we had a question similar to this one last week. We spoke about meta if new highs or that 150, 153 gap fill comes first. Same thing here with Amazon. Let's, let's make the chart just a little bit bigger for the guys and the members. We got that $100, massive $100 cycle level. If you zoom out on the daily, even the weekly, you can see that's a huge pivot level um, for Amazon. A little bit more of like a micro trend. Uh, screenshot of the chart right here as well as that gap fell down at 86 dollars i believe amazon closed on friday at yeah 93.50 so uh 100 and that 86 dollar gap fell equidistant as of that close trading higher in the pre-market up about a percent one point um since friday's close what do you guys think uh hits first a reclaim of that hundred dollar level or 86 gap fill on the daily let's start with mander I think 86 um, feels first here in Amazon. This fell out of its uh, rising support here, actually, before a lot of other names. But now you have Microsoft fallout, Apple fallout. So realistically, you're just saying, do I think markets trade lower or higher in the short term? I'm going to say lower. I think this is 86. Gotcha. Uh, Hondo. That's a disgusting looking chart. It's like a head and shoulders down into that gap, Phil. Um, it's tough to be bullish on that. Uh just by looking at that chart, I'm going to go with the gap, Bill. Diamond. Before you put this, uh, before you put this chart on Twitter, you should throw some volume on there. Um, is there volume? So is there you, some shelves? So you don't get crucified. Um, no, no. I just saw somebody get absolutely assaulted on Twitter for not putting volume on their chart. Yeah, it's a crazy got thing. Yep, the Ooh, volume Twitter. Volume. We got the volume warriors. We got the obnoxious bulls. We got the obnoxious bears. Not even. Over <laughs> I'm gonna go with. Um, I'll take the contrarian view and go 100. I think maybe this bounce that we're getting in the in the indices, maybe it lasts a little bit longer than people are expecting. Um, people got short a little bit too early, get squeezed to oblivion, and Amazon taps 100. Yeah. And Mama. Uh, I'm going to go with Diamond on this one. I think we see 100 first. I think we'll get a nice strong bounce, trapping bulls, given that bullish momentum, and then dump this shit. Got feeling coming. Yeah, I mean, the, the chart really looks disgraceful off of that uh, that high at the beginning of February on earnings. Even if, I mean, if you pull up the weekly chart, that tells the story uh, even better. Just nasty, nasty shooting star um, all the way up at 114. So, It'll be interesting to see what happens. I'll be following that one pretty closely. Along with the meta one, we'll come back. We'll see which one hits first. And our last question, Ryan, pull up the tweet. Let's see it. I'm interested in hearing if there's any changes from our economic di- economic guys. Will there be a soft or hard landing? Pretty simple. Uh, those of you that don't know, the general consensus of you know the basis, the, the guideline of a soft or hard landing is – Basically, if the Fed, the central bank, raises interest rates too high or too soon, it would be a hard landing. Vice versa, slowly by a small amount, soft landing. There definitely are a lot more factors to uh, come into play with that, as well as trying to hit the federal funds rate, uh, inflation, all this crazy nonsense and data that we have every single week coming up and the looming fears of a possible recession. What do you guys think? Soft or hard landing? Money mander. You know where I lay. Soft landing would basically be, are they able to tackle inflation and get it back down to 2% without putting us into a recession, which they've never been able to do. They're probably 0 for 4 now on legitimate. Basically, the economic situation we're in versus, you know, your your soft landing in the 90s and stuff when we really weren't this bad, this deep into inflationary pressures, they're never able to fix it without sending us into recession. So I'm going to say we land about as hard as Kevin Ware. Oh, my gosh. Come on, man. This is a family-friendly show. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm joking. Uh, you had that prepared since last night. Look, man, we got tons of viewers. Kevin Ware is about to be the most uh, highest trending. He's, he's trending again. 
human being oh because gosh. of money man on, on Bet the Bell. Don, Good morning. Holy shit. Would love to know what you had to say here. <laughs> yeah, how about you turn your mic on there, Chief? Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, you got me there. You you, you flustered me. I'm going to go um, no soft landing. Man, it's nail on the head. They've never been able to do it before. Um, it, it just doesn't seem – it doesn't seem likely. Um, to Manor's point, they've they've stopped pricing in that, um, that pivot by the end of the year, which is interesting. Um, I think that the markets were – trying to, 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 to price in a soft landing as much as possible, as optimistic as possible, um, you know, in, in January, early February, it seems like the market has sort of stepped back from that view. Um, and so I think even the market believes that a, a soft landing is less likely at this point. So I guess we'll have to see. But yeah, yeah I, I don't think it's, I, I'm going against the soft landing. Interesting perspective as far as that pivot. I remember coming into the year, they were targeting like September, October, Q3, 4 um, of this year. It looks like that is not the case anymore. And Mo Mambo, let's finish with you. All right, look, I don't, you know, I don't have any data points uh, to talk to you about, guys, but I will say price action. I agree with what uh, Mandarin Diamond just hit on for sure. Um, of course, there's no soft blend. Guys, if you look at price action, I'm going to get into something, which leads us to our next segment, right? The market analysis. I will get into that and show you guys what um, line I'm looking at. Definitely not a soft landing on the market. I think we will make new lows in the market. So interesting, interesting pattern I caught here. All righty. I mean, let's see what happens. This is going to be this is a huge week, especially after the you know start of this downtrend. Um, Might have been a shift in sentiment across the board, especially on in investors' uh, mindsets. Bouncing a little this week. Let's see if we get some continuation or not. Hondo, what's up with that face? I think we're gonna we're gonna skip uh, Mamba market analysis today. Oh damn! No way. They're gonna miss out on a good one then. All right. You guys caught them. Rams, are you uh, you done? Or are you uh? That's it. We wrapped up. Case All right, perfect. Perfect. Another great uh, bet the bell. Now it is over to Mo Mamba for Mamba Market Analysis. Go ahead here and uh, share my screen. It's massive, massive. They were just infamous trend line right here. I thought we were legit about to skip market analysis. I unshared my screen and reshared it now. All right, guys, let's get, let's get into this. So I did not catch this for sure. I, I saw this chart off of – it wasn't on Twitter. Um Definitely not on Twitter. You don't catch any good shit on Twitter. I'm joking, but it is toxic. But um, I saw th- I saw someone post this. They were actually they made drawings. They weren't looking at the the uh, price action. They just um, highlighted you know the scribbled um, over the price action and posted a chart. But check this out. You see how we ended up forming resistance. We broke the high, came back, failed, and made the new recent low. Right. Same thing's been happening throughout. Now, when the market started down in its bear trend, right, we made a drop, we came back up, formed a nice double top, drop, made new lows, came back up and tested this recent resistance, right? This recent high, made that new high, but failed to hold support and then dropped. And guess what happened? We made new lows. Same thing happened again. Bounce, consolidation, nice resistance formation, drop, new lows, came back up, tested that resistance, made new highs, right? Broke that recent high. Once we came back down, we came back through this price action here. Guess what happened? New lows. Now, same thing's happening again. Come up. Nice little double top there. You could even draw it up to this resistance right there. Um, Drop. Curled back over. Broke this recent high. What happened, though? We came back down. We can't hold it. What's the pattern playing out? Is this time different? Who knows, right? Only price action will tell. Now, there's one other thing I did note. I've had a whole bunch of shit on my spy chart. So I just told myself, hey, let me clear this out, draw up these lines and see what else I'm noticing. Now, I did not see this before, but we do have a head and shoulders on um, an inverse head and shoulders on the market right about there. And why I'm noted, why I'm noting this is this. So we did bounce off of what this daily demand right there. You guys see this right there. So we did bounce off of that daily demand. And also we did come off of what do you get when, when you do break a pattern at times, most times, what do you get guys, you guys in discord, you guys know, I hit on this. It's one of my favorite uh, trading tactics. It is the, uh, what the, the break hook and go, right? The break hook and go. That's what we got off of this inverse head and shoulder breakout. 
we finally broke out. We usually come back and retest the uh, neckline. And that's what we got. That's what I was looking for today is to see if we're able to really bounce off this neckline. So this is a strong upside play into what? into our supply zone. So what I'll be looking at today is 403 to 405.7. Watch that zone if we come up there. Of course, you do have some daily levels like your 400. Um, but mainly, mainly, mainly to, for further downside is I would probably want, if I'm looking for further downside, if we're, we were to continue playing out this pattern up here, um, I would definitely want something like this to occur. We get this nice bounce, we rip into the zone, reject and come back through. We come back through. I don't think this trend line is going to hold. I think it played out its role of this bounce. And then we come back through into the lows, right? Which will I'll be targeting is the lower the this right shoulder around 376, 378. Of course, we'll get into that. There'll be some other levels and zones there. But definitely, definitely, definitely the break hook and go off this inverse trend line into this zone. If we get back above, ooh, things will be interesting because we do have a gap to fill up 422. Therefore, this pattern will not be playing out anymore, right? But so far, so good on this pattern, right? So far, so good. How will it be invalidated if we break this recent high? Recent high, maybe fill the gap up here, all right? So interesting analysis here. Really nice one. Right now, I'll just look for this gap fill. I mean, this uh, demand's going to be tested. Thanks, Hondo. That'll be it. All right. Thank you, Mo. Now to wrap up the show, we've got trade of the week. It's time for America's Trade of the Week. Now, here's a guy who knows how to trade stocks. Diamond Trades, take it away. Um, yeah, so this is a trade that we took on Friday. We had Ryan make um, probably the sickest video in existence. Um, to recap it, Ryan, if you want to play some of that. I might try long here. This larger fair value gap from before is is brick wall. I got stopped at 54, yes. I fear dying in here. Then make the climb. <sighs> Without the rope. How long right there? 55, stop a little low a day. This will be my last attempt at logs. That was a long trade that we took on Friday. Um, the reason that I felt um, that that was one of my better trades last week is because that's a situation that we often find ourselves in. We have an idea um, and it doesn't necessarily play out exactly how we want. And it's a battle within yourself to sort of say, you know, my idea was not wrong and to, um, you know, re-enter a trade like that and, and to take the win. So I think that that's something that I think, a lot of people can learn from, and it's particularly for me, the reason I was able to do that is sizing, right? If I had sized too heavily, I take that first loss. I'm too apprehensive to get back into the trade in a situation like that. If you size appropriately, it's all right. I have more bullets left in the chamber. I can try this again, see if this idea is going to work out since it hasn't been validated. Um, so a lot of a lot of really good nuggets in that trade. Again, awesome video by Ryan. Thank you for that. Um, so, yeah, that was our trade from last week, and uh, hopefully we can grab another one. Let's do it. Thank you, Diamond. Thank you, Ryan, for the amazing video and for being on production all show long. That's going to do it for this morning show, everybody. Appreciate you guys joining us. If you're watching on YouTube, if you could like and subscribe to the channel, that helps us out a lot. For those that don't know, we'll be trading live all day in the Kane Capital Discord. You can go to kane-capital.com. We've got a seven-day free trial going, so you can check us out without putting any of your hard-earned money to work. But other than that, 
We're ready to go. Hope you guys are ready to go. We'll see you back here on Wednesday morning. Let's have a great week, everybody.